Now then, people, it is Monday, the 2nd of August, and it is time for another instalment of the Just Joe Football Show. I have got a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, we've got a transfer special with an extra guest just discussing all the latest links. Let me know how you think that format goes when you watch that. Uh, and if you like it, I'll do more of it. Uh, we've got an update from a friend of the show, Heidi, uh, LUFC Heidi, um, you know, loves to trips away, has a multitude of knowledge when it comes to players from the Dom Revy era. So I thought I would get her on just to say a few bits on Terry Cooper. And then we'll just box it off with a few updates on some of the current Leeds United squad. So before we get into today's video, as always, please smash a like on the stream, get your notification bell smashed because we've got plenty of live streams coming your way this week. And let's get into the video. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. So as I said, guys, we're going to start first of all with Terry Cooper. Um, my apologies for not getting it in yesterday's episode. Of course, it was breaking news coming on Saturday evening. Um, I didn't get it in there just because I wanted to get, um, you know, to to get some more information from from those uh, that you know had first hand experience uh, of of knowing Terry and who better than to turn to than my good friend Heidi. Um, but yeah, Saturday evening, um, Leeds tweeted out. Uh, saying that they were devastated to learn of the passing of Terry Cooper. Uh, their thoughts were with Terry's family and friends at this difficult time. And, of course, I send mine also. Uh, a club legend, Terry Cooper. Uh, he amassed 351 appearances for the Whites, scoring 11 goals from the full-back position. Um, he was part of, of course, Leeds' most successful era to date. Um, he scored the only goal against Arsenal in the 1968 League Cup final at Wembley. Uh, it was one of the most iconic moments in our history. You know, it was securing uh, our first major honour with a 1-0 win over the Gunners uh, at Wembley. So, um, a club legend, loved by many. Um, but like I say, I, I can't profess to have first-hand experience. So, I'm just going to pop you over to Heidi now. We'll be able to give her thoughts. The sad news keeps on coming out of Elland Road with the news yesterday of the death of Terry Cooper, another one from the legendary Don Revy team, the best team that I have ever seen play. I was only talking about you being ill at a Legends do a few weeks ago. I've shared a photo I took of you and Norman Hunter at the Men With Hill Supporters Club do when the players would freely mix with us fans. The rapport you had with us was fantastic and was evident whenever we called in at your sports shop when walking to Elland Road. You always took the time to come and have a chat with us. Those memories are priceless. My thoughts are with your family and remaining teammates at this sad time. And thanks for the memories. Marching on together. And there we have it. That was Heidi's thoughts. And I just want to, you know, send my thanks for her as well, sending this over at this difficult time. Because as I say, she has a relationship with this Don Revy area, you know, and she shared some, you know, specific photo there of, of uh, Cooper and um, Norman Hunter. Uh, and I just wanted to share a, another few pictures that the Leeds United Live um, had put out. They've I put the link in the description because there is loads of brilliant pictures of Terry Coop with all of the Leeds United legends. I just selected a few for you to take a look at. Uh, so there he is with, of course, Don uh, there, which I'm assuming is Billy Bremner's wedding. Otherwise, it's just some some random person kissing his partner, I'm assuming. Um, but there's some of the lads there uh, in that picture. Of course, they're winning, winning the League Cup. Um, and just uh, another image there with obviously them them famous tracksuit with Terry Cooper on the back. There is a number of brilliant images that Leeds United Live have shared with us. The link is in the description if you want to take a look at them. Please do because there there is some fantastic images. We're now going to discuss transfers, guys. And as I say, I was putting together the video I as I always like to do, going round the houses, and uh, I got in touch with my good friend Gary from Talking Shut, and uh, he was at a loose end. So I said, you know what? Let's try out something different on the Just Your Football Show. Let's get another Leeds United fan on so we could have a chat just about the latest links. So, yeah, let me know how you guys, you know, receive this. As I say, it's a little bit longer than normal due to me and Gary having a chat. He's a good friend of mine and a top, top bloke. So I hope you enjoy this section of the video where we go through all the latest transfer news. Right, guys, as promised then, I thought we would try something a little bit different today when it comes to uh, discussing the transfer. I've got uh, a very good friend of mine with me, Mr. Gary. 
uh, from Talking Shot. How are you doing, guys? All right? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. I'm, uh, I'm honoured to make my debut on Just Joe. Good. You're the first, man. You're the first that I've done a joint one. And in my head then, I was going, do I go with Gary Dingle, but De- Devon Pot, uh, Gary Talking Shot? I was like, oh, <laughs> my, my, I had a mind fart, mate. I had a mind yeah, fart. Man. How are you doing? All right? I'm very good, mate. Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. I've spent a, a kid's football gala, so... Um... So yeah, it's just from just like, yeah, obviously wearing my colours. Yeah, yeah. Judd had his colours on as well in between games, which was was great. So yeah. good stuff. It's got to the point now, like when I see my family and stuff, my my brother just says to me, "You're a proper dad now." I says, "What do you mean?" And you because he likes to wear all the clobber and stuff still. And I'm like, I look down and I've got like Adidas socks, Leeds United Adidas tracksuit, Leeds United jumper and stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I've just turned into that old guy who's not bothered anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. All different strips, colours, everything, it don't matter. Um, right, we're going to start then, mate, with, I've seen this this morning, apparently Leeds United have made approach for Real Madrid winger uh, Marco Asensio. So a Spanish publication claimed that Leeds are one of three Premier League clubs to have made an approach for uh, the Spanish international Marco Asensio. Um, apparently Real Madrid are ready to offload the 25-year-old this summer. Leicester and Everton are the two other clubs credited with an interest. What do you reckon to that, mate? Um, I'll chat in with lads in WhatsApp group earlier when I saw the link myself. Obviously, kind of fits the profile a little bit. Burst onto the scene, you know, um, capped with Spain, played for Real, but he kind of seems to have lost his way recently. Um, so you know, it kind of would fit. I think his stocks drop, so it'd be a bit cheaper than he's know, got Victor Orta written yeah. all over it, hasn't he? Yeah, That's a little the bit. Sort yeah. of deal that he would go and look right. Okay, we've got a guy here in Spain, you know, a bit. Well, I don't suppose it's like the Rodrigo one, but um, it is something that you would expect Victor Orta to be interested in. I remember, yeah. like, when he was at Middlesbrough, for example, they brought like Victor Valdez in and stuff, didn't they? You know, and that was mm. a bit of a coup at the time, you know. So um, it'd be interesting if if that's the one uh, we we do make. As I say, when you're competing with the likes of Leicester, though, if indeed Leicester are interested, I know not a lot of Leeds fans like to hear it, but they're ahead of us, aren't they, guys? So yeah, do you know, yeah. but we have got Bielsa, you know. I think they're step, they're, 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 you know, they're not a bigger club, but they're probably a little bit further down their Premier League status than we are at the moment. And yeah. I think the other tough sell for Marco Asensio, bear in mind, he's been at Real and he's played in Champions League and stuff like that, is to say. Well, you're going to come in and play second fiddle to Jack Harrison, you know that. Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be the big sell. Like, you know, how, how much does he back himself to come in and shift Jack Harrison? Who, to be honest, I think's been very impressive in preseason. I think he's yeah. been the highlight for me um, mm-hmm. in in preseason, and he looks like he's really got the bit between his teeth. So, so yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a tough sell, but you know, the the other flip side of that is Orta can approach uh, Asensio and say, look, we've got a manager here who's got a track record of improving players. You know, you've kind of lost your way a little bit if we. You know, take take him alone or whatever it may be. You know, we'll we'll get you back to where you want to be, kind of thing. And you know, if you play well, you'll get a chance. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it comes with a name, doesn't he? He's a he's a he's a quite a well known name. He's he's got a pedigree. Um, Do you feel, yeah. guys, we need? I mean, it's not the same for me and you. I know me and you are pretty level headed, but. I, <laughs> Do you think we need a marquee name like that to appease certain sections of the fan base? I think it's only natural that we had a great season last year. We arguably, for a newly promoted side, punched above our weight, which, you know, um, we can't sort of hide the fact that we did. Um, on merit, on merit, not um, not just luckily. But I think it's always that time, in it, in pre-season where we get beat by Betis at the weekend and, you know, a little bit of, a little tiny bit of panic sets in. And I've seen a few little tweets of, you know, we need... Um, we need bodies in and we need this and we need that all of a sudden. And I mean, you know, I love watching my club in pre-season, but I don't pay much uh, much attention to the sort of end result. It's, you know, we know what Bielsa's is like. The lads will have probably done two sessions in the morning before they played. So, you know, it's all about the getting ready for the first game of the season. But yeah, I, I can understand where that sort of, that sort of urge to see the club want to push on again. But yeah. like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we necessarily need it, but I did think, and I do think that as transfer window needed to be sensible signings, and obviously Firpo seems like a a decent sign. He's made a couple of of you know seven out of tens, I would say. Uh, obviously sets Bamford goal up against Betis, and that's what you want to see from your left back. Yeah. Um, but the but the flips, and I mean, I mean, there's a bit of angst in the moment about the central midfield area, and we'll get onto one of the link, names linked at the minute, but yeah. like, let's be honest. If we bring someone in now of a big name, so we bring. And Nathan Nandez in, who's been linked over and over and over again. Mm. 
hand on heart, do you honestly think he moves a Klitsch, a Dallas, a Rodrigo, a Roberts, a Calvin, yeah. even a Cock now? I know he plays different positions, but does he start on the first game of the season against Man United at Old Trafford at this current moment in time? No. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we start that first game with exactly the same lineup that finished last year, just with Firpo uh, in the side as opposed to um, Alioski playing well, I, last I said the real Betis lineup was our first. That's our lineup minus Calvin for Cock. That, that'll mm. be it. That'll yeah, be yeah. it for me, I yeah. think. Um, and just on that left hand side, when the way they worked that goal for that first goal, I was like, you know, that left hand side is going to be mm. something special this season. I can't wait for it to to start, mate. Um, we'll we'll talk about another winger now that again is heavily linked due to the links with Victor Orta, I believe. We had Duncan Castle coming out and claiming on the Transfer Window podcast that Leeds United had launched a thirty million pound bid to sign Spanish international Adama Traore. I've heard you say it. I've said it on here a few times. I actually got grief for it in my comments saying I'm better than that when I referred to him as Hadi Sacco on steroids, which I stole from you guys. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but that's Alex Crook at Talk Sports since come out and said, look, he's spoken directly with Wolves and they have not received any bid whatsoever from Leeds United. But... We're never paying thirty million for Adama Traore, are we? And, and to be honest, no. I think he's rubbish. I do, guys. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm kind of on board with that. I, I don't rate him. Um, to be honest, I don't. From what, watching him at Wolves, I don't really see what he brings. Yes, he's a little bit of an anomaly because he's a unit and he's a sprinter, and they lube him up and all this type of stuff. But it's a little bit of a. For me, it's a little bit of like a. A show pony type event. Oh, look, yeah. they're bringing on Adama a Traorian, they're going to lube him up so nobody can get hold of him. Yeah. But then when he gets the ball, I'm, I'm, you know, it's granted he scored against us, but it was very, very fortuitous last year when mm. Melia Paris, uh, when he strikes against Barnett, comes off Melia's head and goes in. But no, I mean, yeah. the thing for me with that link is the 30 million, um, the 30 million target. I mean, is Victor, uh, um, Bielsa and the club at the moment going to splash out 30 million on? a second winger who yeah. is kind of play. He's like 28 or something. Is he 28? Mm. Yeah, right, right. Getting, on, yeah, getting yeah. on a little bit. I mean, you know, we don't need, we don't need him for the first team uh, as in the, you know, the starting 11 at the moment, it takes some shifting of Raf and Harrison at the moment for me. And, um, I don't know. I get, I get the feeling with the Triori thing. He desperately wants to move. And again, our names chucked in there just to add a bit of credence. I can't honestly see that one happening if I'm, if I'm yeah. really honest. No, I seen him made claims earlier on in the summer as well that he wanted to play for Barcelona. I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen anyway. But uh, I think Duncan Castle had also said Traore had turned it down because he's seen it as a bit of a sideward step. I think Duncan Castle's just making stuff up, if I'm being totally honest. But there is probably an element to that as well, though, for Adama Traore. I don't see why he would move to Wolves to another team in the no, Premier no. League that's also not in Europe. Why? Surely his next step will be Europe. And I think Adama Traore probably could play for a club in Spain, in Italy, or someone like that, that is in Europe. I think he, yeah. if he wants to leave, he probably will leave, but he's not really going to be coming uh, to Leeds United. Um, another one that's not going to be coming is Josip Bricalo. Now, I spoke about this earlier on uh, in the summer, just when he was playing in the Euros. I knew we'd been linked. Didn't really rate him. He didn't. He came off the bench a couple of times for Croatia, and I, I was a bit like, I don't see what he's all about. But um, apparently, Leeds were very much in for him. Um, the lads at LUFC fan zone spoke to someone close to the player and said they were apparently Leeds and Liverpool, and Leeds have pushed all the way according to LUFC fan zone. But he has decided to join uh, Maurizio Sarri at Lazio. So uh, next week, I think that transfer is going to be completed. Do you? Again, do you know much about Joseph Ricardo? Is it a bit like me? It's like we just seen bits and bats in the Euros, but um, it looks like he's opted for Lazio, mate. Yeah, I mean, same as you, mate. I saw him a bit in Euros, and obviously, I read upon him a little bit when I saw the link uh, between us. You know, young young Croat with you know um, hopes for big things, but do you know, like, I think we've also got to remember that uh, I can word this like sort of politely agents have an agenda and when they push yeah. certain things like Liverpool and Leeds have tried hard, you know, maybe they've been pushing that agenda for some time to, to drive his price up. And I'm not for one minute saying that we weren't, you know, I'm not mm. for one minute saying that it weren't somebody we looked at, but you know, you, you've got to always take it with a pinch of salt. You know, we saw it, you know, we, uh, Rodrigo de Paul last year, you know, there was a lot of yeah. uh, like power flirting and, and reality like is that 
it doesn't appear that we ever we had a little inquiry, but other than that, we never pushed any further than that. So I'd always take it with a pinch of salt on what what is what constitutes a train hard, to be honest. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know. But the fifty um, million pound figure is more yeah, than our thing. ballpark, as opposed yeah. to a thirty million for a Dama Traore, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. out of the two, Breckel is the one that you think, yeah, that could happen. It kind of fits yeah. the profile: yeah. young, uh-huh. fa- fairly cheap, somebody else I can work with as opposed to someone who's come into 28, you know, okay, arguably the prime, but does he come in and move Raf? No. Um, have we got quite enough baby oil in, in West Yorkshire to lube him up? I'm not sure. Um, you know, nah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, Let's, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I agree with it. Let's move it on to a different position now, which I think will be the next position filled at Leeds United. The winger may wait, as we know, it may rumble on. I think Victor Orter is waiting for that call. You know, we're willing to... We're willing to sell him now at a cut down price. I don't know. Victor Orta is very savvy in the transfer window. I think that one will rumble on, and uh, the winger will depend on a lot of moving parts if certain players move to different clubs, etc. But the one that will be filled and needs to be filled for me personally, guys, I, I'd like to see it done before the start of the season, which is in two weeks' time, is of course the centre midfield position. We know Conor Gallagher decided against it. He was the number one target. Seems like Leeds United have been waiting for, for him to make his decision. He's made it. He's gone to Palace. We've now moved on. And the name that keeps getting linked is Lewis O'Brien down at Huddersfield Town. Um, I know Alan Nixon, I think it is. Look, I'm blocked by the guy on Twitter. I think me too, me too. If you disagree with anything, it doesn't, I, like I'm never, I'm never abusive to people. That's why I don't understand why I'm blocked. But I think it, as soon as you disagree with it, he just goes blocked. Yeah, <laughs> but he said that Leeds will have a go at ten million pound. Uh, Huddersfield are holding out for that figure. Um, we have apparently offered various swap deals, which for me would make sense if you're thinking about maybe Helder Costa, etc. I don't know what you you think if if we're looking to move players on. Um, I know Josh Hobbs, as I say, a good friend, uh, says he likes Louis O'Brien on Twitter. He's a good player, but if we pay ten million pounds for him, we're absolutely mental. Um, what are your thoughts on O'Brien? I've seen, obviously, your little Twitter thread and I thought, oh, that's nice from Gaza. I like that. That's why I reached out. So what are your thoughts on O'Brien? Man? I think um, whenever I've seen him play, I've always been quite impressed by him. Uh, I'm not for a minute saying, you know, I'm the leader of the Lewis O'Brien fan club, but I've always watched him and thought, yeah, he's always a bit tidy. He's always been a tidy player. You know, even when he played against us, um, at Ellen Road in the in the COVID season with the Luke Ailing volley, I always thought, yeah, he was, you know, he's tidy on the ball. You could see that, he was probably one of the, he was probably if not their best player to be honest. Um, so I've always kind of fancy, uh, I've always kind of liked him as a player. Um, yeah, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, oh, you know, midfielder from Championship, that kind of thing. But do you know what? Like again, it fits the Bielsa mold. Twenty two years old, he carries the ball really well. He's tenacious. He gets up and down. He's got a big work rate. He's got a decent left foot. You can see where he fits in. Like you know where the you know the the sort of Klitsch replacement if Klitsch is you know having a bit of a bit of a dry period and and the thing is as well that's no slant on Klitsch he's played a hell of a lot of football yeah. and you know we might get to the point we mean sort of January again where he just looks burnt out and I think yeah. Lucio O'Brien could be could be a, a decent enough replacement and I mean mm. the problem you'll always have is that we're signing a player from the Championship into the from Huddersfield who. Mm. You know, and we're meant to be supposed to be like this sort of kicking on thing that we, we all keep talking about. But I think what we've kind of got to remember is that Bielsa is very um, sure on what he wants uh, and what he wants mm-hmm. from a player. And we know for a fact he doesn't really deal in names. You know, he's not he's not so bothered yeah. about um, the big name. He's more bothered about what the player brings to the side. And he's obviously seen something in Lewis O'Brien. Um Led to believe you were down there today watching Lewis O'Brien. Yeah, um, yeah for, some, uh, against Jeff Wednesday. Yeah, yeah I've uh, I've got a picture actually. I'll flash up on the screen now. Actually, yeah. So he was at the picture at the Huddersfield game. I don't know whether or not he's been going there to just see Carlos Colbran play, how he's getting on, or or if indeed he looks like he's gone to see uh, Lewis O'Brien because he's been spotted there quite regularly. Carlos Coburn's actually spoken um, after the game uh, uh, to Yorkshire Live and he said, for us, O'Brien is a key player as a coach. I have a lot of respect for him as he's a player performing very well and has a good mentality. I understand any rumour that can happen close to him. I know how important O'Brien is for our team and our club and with luck, I hope he stays. It's not a case of he's not going anywhere. 
it's with luck. And of course, a, a coach is going to have to come and come out and say, you know, things like that, isn't he, Gaz, at the end of the day? Um, yeah. They'll want to want to keep hold of him. I just want to pick up what you said as well about him coming from the championship. I was a bit like that when I first seen it, um, especially, look, I seen his link to him earlier on in July and I was thinking, OK, we'll bring him in. Yeah, but he won't be the main one. You know, I'm thinking he's young. We'll, you know, blood mm. him and, and, and he'll improve. But now he looks like he could be the centre midfielder that we signed. And I was a bit like, oh. But then I think of how much I've had to defend Ben White to Arsenal fans, right? And it's that similar mentality that yeah. then I slipped into thinking, he's from Huddersfield, isn't he? Championship, not a chance. Whereas that's still be the same for Arsenal fans. They're like, oh, he's from Brighton, he's rubbish. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's that yeah. similar mentality. So I had to check myself and say, no, if Victor and Bielsa are signing off on him, then I'm all for it. Yeah, he got linked with um, Newcastle and Burnley, I think, before. Yeah. He's a very kind of Burnley-esque signing. They do like yeah. to go and sort of cherry-pick from the championship at yeah. you know, the sort of higher level, if you like. Um, but do you know what? I think it could be one of them kind of cute signings. Um, I'm, I, you know, I, I want to stick my neck on the line, really. But I think what we've got to be mindful of, and I put in my, in my little thread as well, that and, and it got a bit of kickback, actually, saying, well, we, we're backed by billionaires, but you know, we, mm. we're coming out of a global pandemic. Uh, where you know whether we like it or not, billionaire or not, football clubs have yeah. suffered last lo uh, loss of ticket revenue, all that type of stuff, and we kind of got to cut our cloth accordingly. And there were no way this summer we were going to go and spend another hundred million, um, simply because you know we can't just keep doing that year on year. We're not Man City or, or, or you know or Scummers or Liverpool, and I think even Liverpool can't go out and spend hundred million at the moment. They're you know they're a bit struggling, so you know I think. It could turn out to be one of them sort of clever deals, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where you know he comes in and he can he can fill in when needed, or and he can push Klitsch and he can push, mm. um, you know, Dallas because resale value as well. Yeah, exactly. And twenty two years old, you know, and you know? yeah, I, I mean, someone actually messaged me, you know, uh, who messages me re regularly, Lucas. Big shout out, Lucas, and uh, he said he'd been watching him. And he went, Yo, he's actually really good. He's the Huddersfields in Iesta. <laughs> he's right. <what I'm> <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out, Lucas. Let's not be too bold. Let's not be too bold in this <laughs> yeah. comment. Uh, Jesus. Um, but look, man, I, I'm. I just want to see a midfielder in the door, and I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Maybe t ten million. Okay, I know Josh Hobbs says it's that's a bit too pricey, but but, but is it is it going in today's market? Is it? Yeah, you know, they're talking know. about talk, they're talking about Todd Cantwell to Villa to replace Grealish for forty million. Yeah, like yeah. you know, like in in the current, like I mean, like I'll put this to you then. So we sell Jamie Shack as an example, not for one minute saying mm -hmm. we're gonna do. We sell Jamie Shack. What sort of money we're we talking for Jamie Shack then? If Josh Hobbs is saying ten mils a bit expensive for Lewis O'Brien at twenty two, who's got a contract still at Uddersfield, who's their better player? Mm -hmm. You know, we sell I Jamie Shack. Like you know what I mean? Five. Yeah, five. Minimum, you know, you know what I mean? Exactly. And he's yeah. not as far on as what O'Brien is, is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah, so arguably, exactly. yeah. So it is yeah. kind of the, you know, it, and, and again, let's be honest, like a lot of this money you see touted about, we've paid, you know, 25 million. It's always overinflated in the media and on social media. You know, it'll yeah. be like a run, to run for the term of the contract, all that type of stuff. So it, it's never leads just handing 10 million pound over to Huddersfield. Yeah. It's always like dressed up a different way. And, and you know, at the end of the day, you know, I just feel can name the price really. You know, it's yeah, that thing yeah, of how much exactly. do you want us kind of thing. So, yeah, I'd give him Elder Costa and a couple of mil. <laughs> Mate, but the thing is, the thing is with that, Joe, I'd have to agree that I would look to ship Elder Costa out if I'm if I'm honest. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to ship him out without another winger coming in. Uh, yeah, I know there's yeah, been exactly. much clamour for um, Somerville, and I said, you know, he's been brilliant in pre season. I, I've, I've been pushing that as well, to but, be honest. But again, it's that thing of. You know, we've talked about it at length before. It's that thing of, yes, it looks sparkling in 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Mm, you know, mm. step into the first team. It's a different sketch altogether, yeah. you know, into that Premier League where, you know, it's the, the step up in standard is arguably enormous. So, yeah, keep yeah. him around the place, you know, get him on the bench, get him training with the team, whatever else. But mm. for me, if we're going to let Elder Costa go, which I would, I'd want another out-and-out -out winger, maybe a young lad who can... You know, can, who can learn off Raf and, and Harrison and, and push push them a little bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll speak about another winger now, actually, that's been linked uh, a number of times. You can play a number of positions. It is Noah Lang. And it turns out that uh, Club Bruges have actually acquired a winger by the name of Alex Calado from 
Barcelona for the year. He's uh, going to be joining up with Club Bruges. So does that, when you see something like that, you know, a winger coming in at Club Bruges, does that make you think, OK, that's when we're now going to start to see players moving? What do you what do you make to that, mate? I think the, the curious case of Noah Lang as it's becoming is quite an interesting one because obviously he got linked with some pretty um, terrible anti-Semitic comments and straight away Leeds fans jumped on that and were saying, you know, Bielsa wouldn't have that, all that type of stuff. He has subsequently come and apologised and said that he didn't really know what he was chanting, you know, whether that's a sincere apology or, you know, just a, I've, I've dropped the ball here and I need to go and apologise. Um, but yeah, I mean, I spoke to someone earlier on the window and they said to me that uh, Leeds had contact to Club Bruges about Noah Lang, but Club Bruges weren't willing to enter in any sort of discussions until they could source a source of replacement so you know it does kind of fit that but then you know they talk about um, Otter having three players for each position it makes yeah. you wonder where where Noah Lang fits on that three players for each position yeah. I would pretty much guarantee that Dan James is you know much to some Leeds fans as dismay is still probably number one on that list I would probably stick Ryan Kent on that list as well mm -hmm. and then I would, I would probably yeah. stick Noah Lang as the third on that list uh, yeah. despite the amount of people we get um, get linked with so yeah it's an interesting one I mean I think that if the Grealish transfer goes through this week and, and Harry Kane eventually joins City as well, which I think he will do, uh, I think that'll kick fire the market a little bit because there'll be that knock-on domino effect of suddenly lots of money going in and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And you just never know when it'll sort of trickle feed down. But yeah, I mean, no, I like, I mean, I've, I've watched a few videos. It's difficult to tell on sort of YouTube. I watched um, 45 minutes of a Club Bruges game and he look, you know, he looks effective. He looks exciting. He's young. Yeah. He fits again. I keep talking about the profile, but he kind of fits the profile. He isn't coming in now and moving Harrison and Rafina, but no. he's coming in to work with them, you know, and yeah. yes, we've got Perveda and yes, we've got Somerville, but I'll be honest, I'm yet to see enough from Jan Perveda to, to think that he's really going to push either of them to. And mm -hmm. I'm yet, I'm yet to see Somerville be tested at this level to make mm -hmm. a comment about him. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, like I said in my thread earlier, I'm quite coy on it. I did have a little ping of, you know, we really need to get a few players in, but quite coy on it because I simply think that the club have got it right so far, transfer-wise, mm. in, the, in the last couple of years, that, you know, they've afforded some credit, really. We can we can let them have a bit of credit for yeah. the time being and just believe, believe in the process, which is very, very uh, coy yeah. and cliche. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean... O'Brien and Dan James for me. O'Brien and Dan James. I really mate, want Dan James. The reason I want Dan James, right, is because I know Bielz will make an absolute ball around. Mate, absolutely. Absolutely. You know I, mean? I was talking to um, a scum fan who was a friend. He's like the only scum fan I've got um, who was a friend. And um, he was saying that um, he thinks Dan James is excellent. He doesn't want him to leave. And he's been like a little bit of a lightning rod for some angst towards... Obviously, Ed Woodward and the the yeah. um, Norwegian PE teacher who's in charge. So, mm. you know, I, I think I, I, I'm I'm with you, Joe. I think um, I think Dan James comes in and and Bielsa makes him into a baller. To that end, I'd I would prefer us to sign him permanent if we can, if we can organise that deal rather than um, basically seen, um, turn him into a baller and send him back to them. Yeah, I've seen some people try and claim that Manchester United want 40, 50, 60 set out. And like, no, they don't. They want about 15 to 18 million for him. He's not, they're not. This is what I mean. Uh, yeah, Dan James is going for between 15 to 20 million for me with a couple of add ons. That's it. He's not going. They, they can't claim to want 30, 40 million because no one's buying Dan James for 30, 40 million. No, no, not no. For no, me, no. anyway. No. Not for me. Um, a possible outgoing uh, is Charlie Creswell. So, Charlie, well, I say possible outgoing. Uh, clubs have inquired about taking the under 23s captain on loan for the season. Apparently, a lot of uh, championship interest. Sunderland uh, have had a bid knock back as well. So, Leeds want the defender to continue developing at Ellen Road and are set to offer him a new deal. What do you think to that? I think for me, guys, when we send players out on loan, it's not always a good sign, is it? No. I mean, you know, you kind of wonder what happens with Robbie Gotts and Alfie McCalmont and. Uh, you know, we've seen Jordan Stevens obviously get a trial and uh, Bobby Camway get a trial uh, in this summer. Yeah, I mean, the the thing is, it's as important that the 23s continue to develop as it is the first team because that's how we keep attracting players like your Lewis Bay and your uh, McGurk and your Amari Miller. So it's important that the 23s make a good stab of that PL1 uh, next year. And, you know, Charlie Cresswell has been outstanding. He's gone away and he looks enormous. He looks like he's had some... Um, some decent training over the over the yeah. summer, and you know he seems to have everything. He's a little bit raw in some stuff, um, you know, but you could see a natural pathway that maybe he, re he replaces Liam Cooper in 
you know, in a couple of years as Coop starts coming towards the end of his sort of career and then he start, starts coming in and um, and pushing your Pascal Strikes and your Entes and Robin Cock to a, to be the fourth centre-back, if you if you like. Um, and I mean, talking about Pascal Strike, you know, for for um, for Charlie Cresswell, that must be a bit of a shot in the arm because obviously Strike didn't go out on loan. And yeah, look, exactly. he's, you know, he's arguably going to start at centre-back barring this injury uh, in first game of the season. So... Yeah, I mean, I'd like to keep him about the place. Uh, maybe features in the Carabao Cup or something like that, and and just see him at a better level in the in the in, in the PL one. Um, yeah, and see how he gets on. So yeah, for me, I'd, I'd I would keep him about. I won't send him out on loan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and another signing, possibly for the under twenty three, just to finish as well. We'll just finish here on the transfer chat. Um, is Josh Doig, uh left back? Uh, he's been likened to Kieran T, and he, in fact, I love these links. That the Geldy one was the next Virgil Van Dyke. Josh Doig is the next Kieran Tierney. He's 19 year old. Um, he's been left out of the Hib squad. I know Hibernian are willing, like uh, willing to move him on, but they want close to like five million. I think they were quoted as saying the clubs that have come forward so far have just not shown any sort of respect and been offering small amounts. But apparently, there's a host of clubs, including Arsenal, West Ham, Watford, and us interested in him. He's been left out of the squad. It would make sense for me, we were speaking just off air, we do need another left-back option because if Firpo gets injured, it means Dallas moves across there and then it's just all moving parts. And in an ideal scenario, Alioski doesn't move move on because I think he'd have been a great squad player for us, well-versed in the Bielsa methods. Obviously, we've let Leaf go as well, which is, it really shows me what, what, I guess Bielsa thought of Leaf's capabilities, the fact that we haven't got a left back. And that's no slant on Leaf. I'm just, it's just obvious yeah, yeah, yeah. that he's letting move on. But we do need another left back. And look, five million seems a lot to outlay for a young kid, but there's obviously resale value there, etc. All that stuff that comes with it, which Leeds United like to like to operate uh, these days. So what what do you make to that Josh Doig one? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about him, to be honest. I saw him linked earlier on in summer, and yeah, it would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, currently we've got uh, Liam McCarron playing at left back, who, I'll be honest, I was impressed with him against Fleetwood. I, I like him, he's, he's quite direct, he's tidy on ball, he's got a good delivery. Um, but yeah, we, we we are drastically thin, really. If you think about if we caught an injury in midfield and we caught an injury at left back at the same time, and we need, say we didn't sign O'Brien, we need a Dallas to fill in there. Who fills in at left back? Yeah. You start looking at maybe... <sighs> I don't know, a Jack Harrison, maybe. He's, he's, he's kind of played that left wing back. Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's played he that left be. wing back role a bit, hasn't he? So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it would absolutely make sense. And again, like we talked about earlier, five million, you know, we're in kind of different times. It's, yeah. It is not small change by any stretch of the imagination, but if you want in this talent who they're calling the next Kieran Tierney, you have to pay for it. Um, so, yeah, it'd be, it'd be one to keep an eye on for sure. And that's it for you, Transfer Chatter, today on the Just Your Football Show. Stick around, though. We've still got some more news to come. Uh, Gary, thank you so much for joining. First time I've done this, so let me know in the comments, guys, if you like where I bring on a guest and we chat through the latest transfer news. Um, what's happening on Talking Shop before I let you go, mate? What, what can we expect for the season? So, mate, after long-awaited and the COVID pandemic and, you know, a slight loss of quality, we're back doing it in 3D this Tuesday. We're obviously missing, uh, we're not doing it on Wednesday due to Ajax game. We're actually recording from one of, ah, I've got to keep it loose so nobody gets firebombed or out. Um, one of our, uh, one of our guys' uh, friend's house uh, because our kind of studio fell through a little bit. So yeah, Tuesday, uh, we're going back live uh, with our new clubber uh, in 3D, which will be nice. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Just more of the same from us at Talking Show. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. Just going to keep talking bollocks, uh, you know, once a week and just see where it goes, to be fair. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Gaz. All right, man. Pleasure. Just want to say thanks again to Gary. Great chat with him. Great catching up. Great catching up. Honestly, salt of the earth guy. Um, and if you don't watch or listen, watch or listen to Talking Shut, then what are you doing? It's a great podcast. So make sure you check them out. And the guys will be back together this week as well, which is always easier to do when you have that camaraderie in person than than over Zoom. So I, I, for one, will be looking forward to seeing the lads back together. So make sure you check that out. Again, guys, give me your thoughts and comments on that section. Would you like me to do that more often? Even if I was to do it once a week, maybe get another League United fan in and we can talk through the latest news. Uh, but thank you again for Gary uh, jumping on and, and giving me uh, his time. Um, just to finish, guys, as I say, the guys at LUFC fans on do some fantastic work. Make sure you follow them. Make sure you vote for them in the Football Content Awards as well. 
they've been doing a little bit of digging when it comes to Liam Cooper and Joe Geldhart. Of course, these two haven't. Well, Joe Geldhart went out, went off with a knock. Liam Cooper hasn't featured in preseason yet. A source close to Liam Cooper had said they hope he's back for the start of the season and maybe even for the Ajax game, which is, of course, on Wednesday. We'll be doing a watch along for that. But they did say, who knows? The boys at LUFC fan zone went on to say it's seeming that Liam's absence is either COVID or injury related. However, the source wasn't willing to go into detail. It's not COVID related or it may have been, but it isn't now because I know he took part in the LUFC Foundation golf day. Um, so it's definitely not COVID related. So he's not isolating because he's spending time with individuals around the club. So if it is a knock, then it, it looks like it'll be injury related, but not too big of a knock, the fact that he's going out playing golf. So he should be okay. Uh, we're going to move just and finish really now on Joe Geldhart. So they've been reaching out to Joe Geldhart. Of course, he got a knock against Geisley. Uh, apparently, he's rolled, rolled his ankle. It's the same injury he had the end of last season, but the scan show isn't as bad. Apparently, he should return to full fitness in a couple of weeks. And he'll be back on the grass on Monday. Um, so it doesn't look like he'll be featuring any more preseason games, you wouldn't think. Um, he suffered a severe, more severe rolled ankle previously at the back end of last season, which is why he missed the last few games. Um, the source close to the player believes he will explode at Leeds this season. He's super fit and his confidence is sky high. Of course, they're going to say that. They're close to the player. But I believe it to be true as well. I think Joffy is going to have an absolutely unbelievable season. It's a little bit disappointing that his preseason has been scuppered by injury because I think, you know, more games he gets, you know, in Bielsa's eyes, etc. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that. We're obviously yet to hear what's going on with Diego Lorente and Pascal Strag, but as I say, we'll find out soon enough because, of course, we play Ajax on Wednesday. And remember, you can join me on the Just Joe Football Show for a watch along of that game. Look, Thank you, as always, for watching the Just Joe Football Show and the Daily Leads. It's a little bit longer than normal, but listen, I want to try and improve the content. And if that's something that you like, then let me know in the comments and I will do more of it. Have a great week now, guys. We're getting a step closer to that opening game against Manchester United. I cannot wait. Have an amazing week and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leads, leads, leads.